Council Bill 8, 2021, CRA 193, introduced by the chair at the request of Blue Stream LLC, an act amending the Howard County zoning regulations to allow all CAC corridor activity zone properties to reduce the required commercial square footage below 20 square feet per dwelling unit if the Department of Planning and Zoning finds based on a market study submitted by the developer that the reduction is necessary for the financial viability of the project. Again, this bill expires on the 15th of March. So either you, uh, you, you vote uh, to approve or deny or remove from the table and extend the table again. I move to, re to uh, remove uh, CB8 from the table. Second. Okay. Motion to remove CB8 2021 from the table has been moved and seconded. Um, Mr. Wimberly, would you please call a vote on that motion? Uh, Chair Walsh? No. Dr. Jones? Yes. Ms. Young? No. Ms. Rigby? Yes. And Mr. Youngman? Yes. So, Mr. Wimberly, okay. do I understand that the motion to remove CB8 2021 from the table fails? No, it, 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 uh, it passed. Three to okay. two. Passes. So, all right. Let's see where we are. Mm -hmm. Move to. Uh, no, 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 no. I okay. move to approve CB8. Second. I move to approve Amendment Number One to CB8. Second. Okay. CB8. Um, excuse me. Amendment One to CB8. Um, eliminates the scope restriction that limits the requirements to parcel with at least 800 units. Uh, it also reduces the fee imposed when the commercial space requirement is reduced. And it also eliminates the requirements for parcels that do not have frontage on US Route 1. Amendment number one to CBA 2021 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Ms. Young. Um, from what I can tell, Dr. Jones, this amendment is exactly what Tom Cole, the attorney for Blue Stream, asked um, that uh, his client be able to take advantage of during the work session. And my understanding is that um, the Department of Planning and Zoning did not recommend that we move the amount down to $25 but rather we keep it at $50. Is that correct? Oh, I wasn't familiar with what Department of Planning and Zoning had recommended or not. That was what was in the original bill, and that was what was in the technical staff report that we were given regarding this. Oh, wait, are you saying in response to, are you saying in response to the conversation we had at the work session or beforehand? I'm saying that when we got the information about this bill, it came with the technical staff report that indicated that the Department of Planning and Zoning recommended that the amount remain at $50 uh, per square foot. Um, okay. So I'm wondering why would we take a, an administration recommendation and cut it in half? Well, given the conversations that we had at the uh, the work session um, and talking to living by this um, establishment, seeing the um, vacant commercial lots, um, I'm in a space where I would like to amend the bill to make it, as I stated tonight before, palatable for everyone. And I believe that doing this is a measure to do that, just like how you just like how you have an amendment um, in a area of the bill which you would like to amend right but um your amendment goes directly against what the administration was recommending so did the administration say that they were in favor of taking this 50 dollars fee down to 25 dollars and cutting it in half did you talk to them about that so no i didn't talk to the administration about it um as a council member you know as all five of us are we're able to file amendments on things that we see fit things we like, things we don't like, you know, like the amendment you have coming up. 
So, no, I didn't talk to the administration about this particular amendment. Mr. Ruby, I saw your hand and then Mr. Youngman. So I see him a second to unmute, but I, I believe what we heard in the work session is that the property owner at $50 would build more vacant commercial. That that would be the end result. And, and as a resident, um, seeing it day in and day out, as I mentioned in the work session and previously, I'm the one that sees these vacant commercial lots every day. I can't speak for any other council member, but I know what I see. Anything that can help the viability of Route 1 um, and other <coughs> CEC establishments is, is a plus for me. Mr. Youngman and then you, Ms. Young. I was just going to add or a question that um, did I also hear in the work session that the original ZRA that went to the planning or that was submitted to the county was at twenty five dollars. Yes, I, so I, I believe I believe it was in the original ZRA. So it was in the original. I guess the administration ZRA, didn't sponsor it. No, it was not in the, the technical staff report recommendation. So the administration, like county executive administration, might not have opined on it, but we do know that DPZ raised it to fifty. Okay, gotcha. DPZ didn't raise it to fifty. DPZ kept it at fifty. Oh right, right, right. right. And then what we heard in the work session is that at that amount, we would the result, the outcome, would be vacant commercial. No, because the amount is not tied to the portion of Dr. Jones's um, amendment that would allow the uh, developer to completely um, take away any commercial requirement. So the developer can take away all commercial um, development that was required on this particular residential apartment building and pay $50 and still not have the empty retail. Um, but this amendment would both take that amount and cut it in half from 50 to 25 and it would um, take away the need to do any kind of retail or commercial in the apartment buildings. So the two things aren't tied together. You could do one or you could do both. This amendment does both. Mr. Glenning, I know you're on the call. Did, did you do a fiscal impact analysis of this amendment number one? Sorry, and just to circle back. I'm to sorry, this. Ms. Rigby. Can, sorry, yes. can we get an answer yes. from Mr. Glendening first? Uh, yes, I was. Um, we did do one. We provided it to the sponsor. I'd be happy to um, forward it to you if you like. Yeah, or just tell us what, what the conclusion of that is. I, I, I suspect that means some loss to the county of revenues otherwise collected under what would otherwise be a $50 fee instead of a $25 one. Right, but there's, so it's it's one of these, like we did on most of the ZRAs, I mean, you can't determine what the fiscal impact because we don't know what decisions are going to be made by developers as a result you know, what, what's the future development of the commercial space? We can't put a number on that. Uh, they could be, um, yeah, right. So obviously the fee and the revenues are going to be impacted because we're reducing the fees, but we, we can't calculate what that's going to be. Well, in this case, in both work sessions that we had on the CRA, Council for Petitioner acknowledged that it, he understood it to be his client's intent to buy down to 0% commercial. Um, and so, I mean, that would be that would be the the maximum, right? You can give us a range that if if they pay zero percent fee, then it's zero dollars. But the highest um, the highest fee collected under both scenarios, twenty five dollars a foot, a square foot, or fifty um, on this particular project and the commercial uh, square footage obligation there. That that to me seems like that would result in a fixed number that we could say. And and again in very roughest terms, it's half of what the county would collect under the bill not amended, right? Right, but does, does CBA just affect that 
one piece of property that we're talking about? That's not been clear right. either. There was testimony that there are at least two projects where it um, directly impacts them now, and that if a, a third location was aggregated, that may, I don't, I don't. Um, so, as many as my colleagues know, I I am admittedly flat-footed on this bill. It was my understanding that I had an agreement to table it. So um, I didn't ask you for that fiscal impact earlier today, Mr. Glendenny, because I didn't think it was material to a conversation that we're going to be having tonight. But um, I do think it's material to this council's determination of whether or not to pass this amendment and this uh, bill as amended in a circumstance where we're getting all kinds of clamoring from the administration that there aren't enough revenues, why this council would approve a bill that would decrease by half resulting revenues it is not in any way clear to me. Ms. Rigby. So the reason I would support it is because if we don't change it, then it's not bought down. What we get is vacant commercial in that spot. So the choice no. is it's not money we're going to get anyway. It's not money that the county is entitled to. It's money that happens because they are not building the commercial. So it's not money. It's not we're not foregoing any money. We just would not be getting the money, any of the money. I see you, Mr. Youngman. I'm, I'm going to respond to that, though. The county is entitled to the pedestrian oriented zoning district that it has been promised as a consequence of CAC zoning along Route 1 for decades. That's what the county is entitled to. Um, right. Talking, we'll the talking about a singular threat from a singular petitioner's council that if we do not accept their terms exclusively, that you know it's either or. This was the conversation we had in work session. We didn't talk about alternatives to retail. We didn't talk about um, different uses that could be allowed in that same space. We are, are fixed once again on this false binary, which is you either have you know fully occupiable retail or you have nothing and empty commercial space, and and, and that's what I'm going to build. I, that's, I, I think it's a false binary. Again, as many of you know, I wanted to table this bill to actually work out an amendment that made sense in um, in agreement with, with Director Gowan at Department of Planning and Zoning, and perhaps even this singularly benefiting petitioner that's before us. But um, but this bill and this amendment particularly, I think, is pretty clear what the consequence is to county funds. Ms. Young? I'm sorry, Mr. Young. I, I, I just want to repeat each other. again that these two things are not connected. That you can not have any commercial or retail, and that's one piece of it. And then you would pay the fifty dollars, or you could do twenty. You under this amendment, it would cost you twenty-five dollars to buy down to zero. So it doesn't. It just doesn't make sense for the county. I mean, I don't know how we can hear from the county executive just today in a press release that we're in such bad shape financially that we're going to have a $64 million operating budget deficit and then vote to take maybe $2 million out of the pocket of the county. It just doesn't make sense to me. Mr. Youngman. Um, I, I just looked up. It's about 67,000 square feet. So at 25 bucks, it's about a million seven. So if you doubled that, it's it's like a million six seventy five. Actually, the technical staff report actually does have twenty five dollars in it, not fifty. Um, so I'm not sure how the ZRA got changed. Maybe it was through the planning board or or what. Um, I don't think the I don't think the technical staff report was recommending one fee or the over, or the other. I, I, there was a chart that just it was almost a fiscal impact analysis within the TSR that showed it at a couple different um, or a few different dollar amounts. And, you know, I, 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 I hear you. We're heading into budget. Um, I, I, I caution everybody on this, though, that this is not operating budget money. This is not we're giving up two million dollars a year that can go to pay debt service or pay teachers. This is money that's going into an EDA fund to help them do some property assemblages, um, you know, up and down Route 1, um, where we, we're, we all have talked for a while about the, the, the mistake about um, rezoning so much commercial property to residential. 
uh, but commercial needs to be delineated between retail and the commercial we really need, which is industrial warehouse, the big stuff, not not more hair salons and liquor stores. And you know, by doing this, we're 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 giving up that that retail, that sort of spot retail we don't need, putting that money in EDA's hands to hope do some assemblages where we can build some real industrial appointed space. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not perfect. Certainly we could try to get more money, but at some point it just doesn't make any sense and we end up with the empty retail. So um, whether this is deemed a compromise or, or however we got here, I don't think it's the role of the legislative branch to be like negotiating with um, you know, with a private business, we either thumbs up or thumbs down this one. And, um, you know, so I just, that's all. Thanks. Dr. Jones. Yeah, that, that pretty much summed it up. Um, I also did take a glance at the TSR, but yeah, that, that, that pretty much summed it up. Mr. Glendening, did you have something to add? I, I thought I saw your screen pop on. Yeah, I was just going to say, so the original fiscal impact that we put down for this was 1.3 million. This would reduce it by about 650,000. Um, the other thing that we noted on our fiscal impact that hasn't been mentioned was that that it, re it reduces the requirement for parcels, eliminates the scope restriction that limits the requirements to parcels with at least 800 units. So that's one reason why we really couldn't come up with what is what is the impact of this particular amendment? Because now we don't know what the future development, and you take that off as well, that requirement. Ms. Young. I just want to point out on page 14 of the technical staff report that was submitted to us through DPZ when we received this ZRA, um, on the second paragraph, um, it states, while DPZ recommends flexible commercial requirements, we consistently have recommended in-lieu fees as a mechanism to maintain the purpose of the CAC district. The petitioner's proposal to reduce this fee is not entirely consistent with the CAC's purpose since it reduces the obligation of large residential developments to contribute to commercial development on Route 1. Therefore, DPZ recommends that the on-site obligation be based on market demand and no minimum space be required, but the current in-fee lieu amount should remain to promote commercial development along the corridor. The current in-lieu fee amount is $50. Good morning. And as I'll just jump in, and as was stated, what we don't want to have is a situation where the commercial spaces that are coming about are not getting filled. As we as we talked about several times now, the average consumer driving up and down Route One, again, the only council member who has lived there more recently, you you have the parks, Troy Hill Park. Go down a little bit further there's parks all up and down but when a, an apartment complex or a development has the small um almost cubicles if you will of commercial real estate they just don't fill up all up and down route one they are empty or maybe out of the eight spaces one or two tenants are there as we heard in the work session fifty dollars would create more of that and um, i don't want my neighbors to see any more of that i'm sure you wouldn't want your neighbors to see more vacant lots either our small business owners are losing money if vacant lots are there also competing with other parks that are thriving so then the parks that are thriving down the street are now losing business and it's just i, I just didn't see it feasible to create more vacant lots with that fee and loop and that's and, and that was the impetus of it Ms. Young. This developer has the right to create 1,345 units, which means that this developer will be making millions and millions of dollars. Um, 
we have the right as the county to collect a $50 square foot fee to try and improve the area on Route 1, to make it more walkable, to make it a community, to, to actually try and create community on Route 1, to do all the things that this fee was originally supposed to do. And that is to, to just throw that aside because the attorney for the developer said to do it. I, I, I just, it's, we, we can't do that. We, we should be using this money to improve Route 1, to make it a better place for people to live. Picking apartment buildings right up against a, a four lane highway and not giving people amenities is not what we should be doing on Route 1. We should be providing those amenities. We should be providing that open space. We should be doing all those things. And the people who are building apartment buildings with 1,345 units in it and who will be making millions of dollars as a result should be the ones paying for it. Ms. Ruby, I think your hand was first and then you, Mr. Youngman. Um, if the $50 fee worked and wasn't resulting in people building the vacant commercial that we see, if it worked, then I would not be in favor of reducing it. But what we can see on Route 1 is that it has not worked. And that's why. Mr. Youngman. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, but I don't have anything. All right, good, because I want to respond to that. There's no evidence before this council that $50 a square feet is the right number. When this was addressed five years ago in 2016, it was acknowledged by all that it was an arbitrary sum. They had no basis in anything. So for this council to pretend like 50 or 25 or any other number has anything other than just something pulled out of air is fallacy. Secondly, to suggest that this council doesn't go about on a monthly basis negotiating with developers a particular term specific to their particular for-profit project, also a fallacy. I refer you to last month's vote on the TOD. We amended that so it specifically only applied to that singular property. Okay, that's a negotiation with a developer that this council did within the last 30 days. And then thirdly, to suggest that by not taking these fees, we're not in any way affecting the public fist, also a fallacy. First of all, we heard Larry Twill from EDA say that he's not even spent the money that's been collected from this fee in lieu in prior years. That, beyond disappointing for me, and I'm sure the constituents up and down Route 1, but always the budget is finite. If EDA has money to do something from a different pot, then it's money that perhaps this administration and others behind it will not invest in Route 1. So the notion that this is just going to increase an illusory investment along Route 1 for the benefit of the people who live there now and will move into these apartments and townhomes and developments, all 1,300, however many of them, is Young, also a fallacy. I, I, um, I'm, every month we're in this situation. Every month you guys are amending bills for the specific benefit of one developer who's filed a ZRA for one project and you pretend like it's not that. That is exactly what this is. Unless, uh, go ahead, Dr. Jones, but tell me it's not. So first off, to make the assertion that I or anyone on the, camps, on the council is doing something for a particular developer is um, quite frankly offensive. Um, I would love to be in a business where I had a kajillion dollars to invest in Howard County or any other county. Um, there's only a finite, use the word finite, there, not only is there a finite number of developers, but that finite number is quite small of those that want to do business in the county. Given the state that our county is in, given the state that our country is in, monies coming to the county in various forms of revenue is nothing but positive for what, you know, I would like, I would proudly boast about one of the finest counties in the entire United States. I'm not even concerned on who the developer is or if we see petitions from repeat, um, if we see repeat petitions from the same developer or if it's from various developers. I'm just happy money and business is being done with Howard County. Okay. So we heard from the work session. We've heard different stances. What's going to make this deal work? What's going to make everything work? And we as council members get to file amendments. Developers get to 
throw money at the county to help the county better. Could taxpayers pay taxes to live where we live? It's one of the most amazing places in this United in these United States of America. So to create, you know, the assert or to state the assertion that any one of us is doing something for one particular developer um, is, 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 is actually the fallacy. I think that um, this would be better for us not to have vacant commercial, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Any other discussion on amendment number one to CB8 2021? Mr. Wimberly, would you please call the vote on amendment number one to CB8 2021? Chair Walsh. No. Dr. Jones. Yes. Ms. Young. No. Ms. Rigby. We can drive down Route 1 and see the vacant commercial that was built that people built instead of choosing the $50. So it's not, I just, I really hope people listening understand that, that the $50 is not guaranteed. We can see that other people who have built similar things have done the math and that they chose not to utilize the $50 fee in lieu. They built the vacant commercial, we created, we've traded one problem for another problem. I think that this gets us to a more workable solution. Um, I'm also excited about the next amendment because um, I think that, that it helps a lot too. So I vote yes. And Mr. Yes. yes. Amendment number one to CB8 2021 passes. Ms. Young. Amendment number two to CB8 2021. Second. Is that Ms. Rigby? Yes. So this amendment was an attempt to the community. Um, it would, uh, if the fee is paid to reduce the commercial space requirement below the minimum, which since amendment one has passed, it appears that that will be the case, an additional increase of residential density shall not be permitted, and instead the unused commercial space shall be used as an amenity area as described in section 127.5 and shall be in addition to open space and the amenity area requirements described in section 127 shall be equal to the minimum square footage of the commercial space required. So for example, if the minimum required in this 1,345 unit development that will be built by uh, Blue Stream now, I guess that this amendment has passed, um, that means that they would have a minimum of 26,700 feet in retail that they were supposed to um, develop. Uh, in, and now, instead, if they build their 1,345 units, they would have an additional 2,900 square feet that they would have to put in as amenity space, which could be parks, um, it could be bike paths, it could be um, other environmental uh, areas, it could be a library, it could be a community center. And those are some of the things that are described in section 127.5. Chair, um, Madam Chair, would you like me to move? Okay. Um, I move amendment um, one to amendment two. Second. Thank you. Since, um, this just clarified um, a few things on it. It just changes words like space to square footage um, and then adds in open space. Um, so it, it it just does open space or amenities instead of just the specific um, more narrow amenity. Um, and, I, and I would just like to add one, offer one small technical change to the amendment, um, which would be to insert open space or the line eight. Um, which it's just continues that open space or amenity piece. So um, as you know, 
Ms. Rigby, I don't support this amendment because I don't feel like it, I feel like it takes away from the simplicity of the amendment that I was introducing and I'm not sure that what the consequences of this amendment would be and have not had time to really understand it. So it, it may or may not be as a result of the substantive changes, but because I'm not sure what the substantive changes are, I appreciate you looking at this and I appreciate your efforts on this um, and, and your support on this amendment, but I just don't feel comfortable supporting this amendment. Mr. Wimberly, I just want to make sure that procedurally we're in the right place. We are at Amendment 1 to Amendment Number 2 to CB8 2021, having been moved and seconded. And, and we're we are discussing. Now in the midst of that discussion. Okay. Exactly. Yep. I, I would move. I mean, is it possible for me to move now to table CB8 2021 now? Sure. Okay. I move to table CB8 2021. Second. Oh, second. Oh. I was going to second to somebody else did. Oh. Mr. Wimberly, would you please call the vote to table CB8 2021? Who was the second? I'm sorry. I, missed. I think yeah. Mr. Youngman whispered it. Oh. No, I'm sorry. I was oh, I was saying to myself, Deb, else? you need to second. I, was a hint to Deb. So I was Deb sort of coaching Deb. Deb. So you were saying, you were pretending okay. like you were sitting beside me up on the dais or something. Because I knew what you wanted to do. Right. Yes. Okay. Second. So I, I am the real second. Gotcha. All right. Mr. Wimberly, would you please call the vote to table CB8 2021? Chair Walsh. Yes. Dr. Jones. No. Ms. Young. Yes. Ms. Rigby. Um, I think I think we've got it to a workable solution um, that I am in now. And Mr. Youngman? No. Uh, motion to table CB8 2021 fails. Meaning we revert back to the discussion on Amendment 1 to Amendment Number 2 to CB8 2021. Correct. I mean, again, I, re I repeat what I said earlier, which is I had assurances last week that this bill would be tabled. I declined filing um, amendments on Thursday that we had prepared ourselves and had obtained legal sufficiency on. Um, I like the direction that this Amendment 2 is going, even as it's been amended, because our concern in D1 was increasing open space and setback requirements to be more commensurate with the highest density use residential that now will this and whatever other properties we think are, are influenced by this um, legislation, uh, what those properties are required to do. Um, I don't... I, I agree with Ms. Young. I don't. I don't fully understand what the trade-off is and whether it is. Um, it is a trade-off that does any good for both our, our constituents now and the persons and families who will live in these communities going forward. I would have liked to have had that conversation, um, but uh, it, that is not to be. Is there any other discussion on Amendment One to Amendment Number Two to CB Eight, 2021? I see that, Mr. Wimberly, would you please call the vote on amendment number one to amendment number two to CB8 2021? Chair Walsh. Yes. Dr. Jones. Yes. Ms. Young. No. Ms. Rigby. Yes. And Mr. Youngman. Yes. Amendment number one to amendment number two to CB8 2021 passes. Amendment number two to CB8 2021 as amended has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing that, Mr. Wimberly, would you please call the vote on CB8 2021? Oh, I'm sorry, did I skip ahead? Uh, amendment two. As sorry, amended. okay. Mr. Wimberly, would you please call the vote on amendment number two as amended to CB8 2021? Chair Walsh. Yes. Dr. Jones. Yes. Ms. Young. Yes. Ms. Rigby. Yes. And Mr. Youngman. Um, I, I appreciate uh, Council Member Rigby and Young for this because I this was one of my big issues that I wanted to fix, and I'd come up with several overly complicated solutions, and you guys managed to come up with a much simpler, better one. So 
I vote yes. Amendment number two, as amended to CB8 2021, passes. Motion to approve CB8 2021 as amended has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Wimberly, would you please call the vote? Would you please call the vote to approve CB8 2021 as amended? Chair Walsh. I think my disappointment in how this bill came up and how it's going down um, is plain. I, I wish we would not find ourselves in this same position over and over and over again. It's why I filed, pre-filed, introduced tonight, a bill that would cease these DRAs from popping up every month, even as we close in on a completely revised general plan for the county as a whole. My vote is no. Dr. Jones. Yes. Ms. Young. Um, I vote no on this bill. Um, as I think everybody understands now, this zoning regulation um, amendment would allow a developer with frontage on Route 1 that is building more than 800 units to reduce the required commercial square footage below the current minimum of 20 square feet per unit to zero. The upshot here is that the developer can build more units and pay, well, no, they can't now with my amendment, thank goodness, and pay the county to do so, but half of what they would have paid before because of this amendment. And the residents of the building or Howard County get nothing in return unless you count more overcrowded, more overcrowded roads and schools and looming concrete buildings as a benefit. As one resident of this area said, paying fees to reduce the square footage of commercial space to be paid into a fund administered by the Howard County Economic Development Authority does not meet the need of the original intent of having amenity-rich, walkable, mixed-use communities. Finally, as I reflect on this bill in particular, it disturbs me that it is so one-sided in favor of developers over the community, although we have improved it with this amendment by giving more community amendments to the people who will be living in this area. This bill was originally written by the developer's attorney and made it through the zoning amendment process with only one change, keeping the fee of $50 per square foot for the, for the reduction of commercial space. And now it is it will be assessed at $25 per square foot, thanks to amendment number one. Apparently, there are some who don't want to disappoint a developer in their pursuit of getting the best deal and making sure that in every instance that the person who first and foremost gets what they want in this community is whoever it is that's working with the developer here in Howard County. Zoning regulations are supposed to be about the community. And every month we are facing a zoning regulation that a developer has brought in order to make the situation better for the developer. When are we going to be passing or bringing zoning regulations to help the community? I vote no. Ms. Rigby? Anyone who has visited the Route 1 corridor knows that the past land use policies of our county have not created a successful environment for businesses and families in Elkridge, Jessup, Savage, and Laurel. I could spend many hours discussing the failings of our zoning code <laughs> or the different facets of challenges that Route 1 is facing, um, but I'm glad tonight that my colleagues have put forth reasonable solutions to one of those problems. Right now, CAC properties have two options for their properties. Either build a large amount of low quality, low demand commercial space, or pay $50 per square foot to avoid the commercial. What's been done is visible when you drive down Route 1. For many property owners, the more financially feasible option is to build vacant commercial shells along Route 1 that are not attracting the high quality amenity rich commercial that was envisioned for Route 1. 
that option is not going to be the key to a successful Route 1 corridor. This amended legislation offers a different solution. If it is not economically feasible for CAC property owners to build vacant, low quality commercial sites, they can pay $25 per square foot fee. And because it's not theoretical at that point, it'll be actual, that will actually enhance the Route 1 corridor. And they must build the same amount of open space or amenities area on the site of their development. Instead of requiring poor quality, likely vacant commercial, this option provides benefits to the residents and community members of Route 1 through additional open space and amenity areas, such as parks, fields, additional trees. And if we are going to modify the commercial requirements of the CAC Zoning District, I believe that we should be proposing a solution that stands to benefit all CAC located on Route 1. We should also be creating solutions that benefit the residents and communities that call the Route 1 area home. For some sites, simply forcing additional commercial square footage has not worked. I'm appreciative of these solutions, which provide an opportunity for Route 1 enhancements and additional open space or amenity areas in CAC zoning districts when additional commercial square footage is not financially feasible or consistent with our vision for Route 1. I think this amended proposal charts a positive and solution-oriented path forward for CAC zones along Route 1 in Howard County. I vote yes. And Mr. Youngman. Uh, um, for the benefit of the public, I, I just want to remind people that ZRAs are, are, are written and submitted by property owners. They are a lot of times property specific or certainly if they're specific to a zoning district or a code, they're of interest to the property owner that submitted them. That's, that's the law. That's the way it works. And, um, it, it, it's it's been that way and any assertion that I don't want to disappoint developer and or attorney um, a developer that I had never heard of before this thing came up and had never met and an attorney who um, while he's done a nice job on this certainly isn't a um, big supporter of my party um, it's clear we don't need more spotty retail in this section of Route 1. We need industrial space, warehouse space, um, flex space, heavy stuff that requires big parcels, which we're running out of. We need property assemblages and EDA struggling to accomplish that. This is a way to get the money away from stuff we don't need and move it over to things that we do need. It's not perfect. It might be a compromise. CAC has not delivered um, at all, which is probably why it's, it's days in Howard County are winding down. I totally get that we, we might not want to be redoing what a CAC is a year before we redo the general plan, but there's a lot of retail we don't need in this specific project. Waiting for the general plan um, isn't going to save, uh, you know, from, from this retail being built and get us the money that I think EDA can use to create a much better outcome than what we have now. So I, I appreciate the amendments that address the open space concerns that I had. Um, but in the end, I think this is a is a is making the best out of this CAC situation that has not worked and is going to have a positive outcome. So I vote yes. Motion to approve CB8 2021 as amended passes. This happily concludes our legislative session. We are adjourned. Thank you all and have a good night.